Hello everyone, welcome to A plus B I. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an interesting, a very interesting equation with complex numbers. We have ln of ln z equals z and we're going to solve for z. Now you might be thinking about a similar problem like ln z equals z, would that be equivalent to this? Here's one thing to notice and I think I made a video about that before and you can go ahead and check it out here. Right? So ln ln z equals z, suppose ln z is equal to z, and that would imply ln z equals z. So it kind of implies itself, right? So does that mean ln z equals z is true? Something to think about. But let's go ahead and see how we can handle this problem by substitution, because substitution is an awesome method. Okay, so here's the thing. z is equal to this, right? So this is my z. But I do have a z inside here. So we can go ahead and plug it in for z. So if you replace the z inside by the whole thing on the left hand side, which is, this is z, right? But z I'm going to replace with ln of ln z. Awesome. Let's go ahead and match the parentheses, make sure they're all matched up. And this is going to equal z again. Nothing changed on the right hand side, I just substituted it, right? And guess what? We can continue to do it. Since z is equal to ln of ln z, you can go ahead and replace this z with that again. You could also do the following. I don't know if you noticed, but z now is equal to something else. z is equal to ln of ln of ln of ln z. So you could also substitute that, which is going to give you a really long expression faster. But guess what? The idea is to get the pattern. Before we look at the pattern though, let's go ahead and look at a graph. What does this tell you? This graph should tell you that there are no intersection points, therefore no real solutions. Make sense? Great. So let's see how we can find the non-real solutions from here. If you continue to do this, replace z with ln of ln z, that's going to give you more lns, right? ln of ln of ln of ln of ln of ln z awesome now we have one two three four five we're gonna have one two three four five and that should equal z again and if you continue to do this keep doing it and hopefully at some point you'll be convinced that this is actually gonna continue forever ln ln dot 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 and then at some point you're gonna have ln z and then another parenthesis dot 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 and the last parenthesis this equals z make sense so you're going to have this infinitely many times, infinite set of parentheses and lns. Of course, they need to match up, right? So how do you handle something like this, right? Well, here's the thing. Since the whole thing is equal to z, which is ln of ln of ln of dot dot dot, I noticed that this expression actually contains itself. What does that mean? It means if you forget about the first ln on the left-hand side, the expression inside the parentheses is the same as the original, which means I can replace it with z. Wow, this really simplifies the process, doesn't it? So this gives us ln of ln z equals z. But wait a minute, that's not what I wanted. Wait a minute, I messed up. It's ln of z, not ln of ln z. So I kind of went back uh, accidentally to the original expression, but I should have written ln z equals z. But didn't I tell you that before? Well, that was kind of like an assumption. We plugged it in at work. So that should be true, right? Maybe it's not. I don't know. You'll tell me about it. But this is what we ended up with. After coming up with an infinite expression, uh, we are able to turn it into this, which is nice. So do we know how to solve this? We've done a video. Like I said earlier, you can go ahead and check that out. But let's go ahead and revisit that idea. So for this kind of problem, I'm going to put everything on the same side like this. I'm going to bring the z over here as z to the power negative 1. By the way, you should not move ln z because that's going to give you something like this. That's really hard to deal with. I mean, I don't think there's a way to handle this, but there is a way to handle this. Make sense? That's why if there's a ln of z, we're going to keep it. If there's a power of z, we're going to bring it to the other side. So now, notice that I can multiply, by the way, what is that equal to, right? It's equal to 1 because I multiply both sides by 1 over z or z to the power of negative 1. And now I can go ahead and multiply both sides by negative 1. Uh, 
what is so good about it? Well, I'm going to go ahead and take this negative 1 and put it over here as an exponent. That's the logarithm rule, right? We can go ahead and forget about z to the power of negative 1 and write this as ln z to the power of negative 1. And that's actually awesome because this is super close to the Lambert form. And what is Lambert form? If you have something like t to the t and you apply Lambert's w function, you get t as a result, which is nice, right? Great. So that's the idea behind Lambert's w function and we can solve some interesting equations. Now, let's go ahead and apply it on both sides, but guess what? We're not in that form yet. So let's go ahead and do this. ln z to the power of negative 1 from here and then z to the power of negative 1 can be written as e to the power ln z to the power of negative 1. You know the identity, right? I mean, if you have x, you can write it as e to the power ln x. It's that simple. You see, these two x's are the same. So now we get the t e to the t. Do you see? Okay. Do you t what I t? Now this is my t and that's my t. A cup of t was, was always good. So now we can apply Lambert's w function. Maybe just apply it here. It's a little easier and apply it here. Now we get ln z to the power of negative 1 from here. That's the result of applying Lambert's. On the right hand side though, we just get w of negative 1, which is obviously has a numerical value. And then we can go ahead and bring this to the front or multiply both sides by negative 1. As you know, properties apply. That gives us ln z is the opposite or the negative of w of negative 1. And then we can go ahead and try to solve for z. Obviously, you want to do e to the power both sides. So z is going to be e to the power negative w of negative 1. So whatever that number is, it's going to be a complex number because if you look at the graph of Lambert's w function, I believe which I, I, that I shared that with you before, you're going to find out. Let's go ahead and take a look at the z values, shall we? But basically, if you are trying to use any calculator, especially well, from alpha, you know, you can go ahead and input this as a negative product log of negative 1. You can kind of write it that way. And of course, if you want to put an e at the base, that's totally fine too, because this is going to give you the z value directly. But let's go ahead and take a look at what Wolfram Alpha gave us for the z value. Is there any... Any solu is there only one solution? There's more than one. Let's go ahead and take a look. Okay. Now, Wolfram Alpha says the solutions are, there's actually more than one. And notice that they are conjugates. Is that a surprise? Who knows? But this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.